Morning, Gusters. It's not that early. Um, but it's morning, and I've got no bread, and I want to bake some. Now, oh, I have to paint down, that's a bit hot. Um, this is a sort of semi sourdough bread again, uh, but I've got this one from a book by Ken Forkish, I think it is, uh, Evolution in Bread. And this is a 50% Emma Wheat bread. Now, I think I have mentioned Emma Wheat and Einkorn Wheat and that before, which are sort of ancient, if you like, varieties of wheat. So some of the earlier types of wheat. And the problem is with baking with these is they lack the gluten, they've got gluten in them, but nowhere near the gluten that we have in modern day flours. And as a result, you don't get the rise. So this is a 50% Emma wheat loaf. And we're gonna cook it in the, uh, the old Pullman pan, not with the lid though, okay? And the quantities are designed for this size tin. I think it's a two pound one. Okay, so it's essentially just flour, Emma, fla Emma flour and ordinary white bread flour. Uh, some yeast, water, salt, and the addition of a sourdough uh, culture, uh, which is actually made, I make mine all from rye, so there's gonna be a little bit of rye in there. Now this is one that I've been having on the go for a little while, and I fed it last night, or yesterday afternoon, um, and I've got 100 grams in that. So we're gonna be using that as well. So it's not just pure sourdough, it's also got yeast in it. Now the only difference is he talks about using instant yeast. I've got active dried yeast and so if you've got instant you can just add it as it is dried. But we can't, we need to just get it activated first. So I'm just going to have a double check. I've got everything ready. Now this is a one day bread. Most sourdoughs could be three. This is a one day bread. Right so in here in my jug I've got 425 grams of water, which is about 32 degrees, I think. Thirty-one. Um, which is okay. But like I said, I need to activate my yeast. So I'm gonna add some of that to that little dish with the yeast in, and the rest I'm putting in the bowl. Okay? Now he does everything in Baker's um, percentages, okay? So we're looking at the amount of uh, rice, the amount of flour in there he equates to 100%. And so the water that we're using is 85%. So it is a, a very wet dough, okay? I've got 250 grams of uh, plain uh, bread flour, um, plain white bread flour, 250 grams of the Emma wheat flour, um, I had three grams of yeast in there. Um, I've got 11 grams of fine salt. And I think I already said I've got 100 grams of the sourdough culture, or levain, as he calls it, which is basically French for sourdough, apparently. Um, I've got a thermometer just to check my dough once it's going. I've got a room thermometer uh, because I want to make sure the room stays about the right temperature, about 21, 22, uh, for proofing. Um, and that's it. So we'll just give that a little bit longer and then we'll be good to go. So we start by adding our culture to the water. Now, he, you'll see, we're going to be adding the salt and the yeast together. And I've always sort of read, if you like, that that's a bit of a no-no because the salt will kill the yeast. And to be honest, you put my science head on, and I used to be much part of this. Um, I think that's correct, but he thinks it's a bit of a myth. And it certainly doesn't affect his bread. So if it's not affecting his bread, it doesn't really matter, does it? Um, but the salt is an essential part of the bread dough. So, that's gone in. 
Now what we're going to do is add in them flowers. Now he says you can use your hand to get in with your hand to give it a mix together. Um, I'm just going to use me. I call it a dough hook earlier. I don't mean that, but you know what I mean, the dough thingy. And we want to get the flour and the water all mixed together just like it is now and you can see it is a it is a wet dough okay so we now just sprinkle our salt over the top of the dough and then if you're using the you know the instant yeast as it were you just sprinkle that on now um, but what we're going to do is just pour that over the top and now we just leave it like that covered over got the shower cap and we're just going to leave that for 30 minutes okay we haven't mixed the yeast in or anything we're just at this stage just leaving it like that and then we'll come back and we do a bit of mixing now there's not a lot of kneading to this bread okay we're going to be doing some sort of stretching and folding and all in that bowl um, he advocates using like a tub um, and you just do everything in the tub uh, it wants to be something that's clear because we'll be wanting to see the check that we're getting the rise okay that's at 30 minutes and what we now want to do is get that mixed in there so we wet our hands and just get it underneath the dough lift it up and fold it over and essentially just go round and it is very very wet um, it's not very stretchy at this side this sort of stage um, but what we now want to try and do is get this all you know the yeast and the salt all mixed in so we've sort of folded it in so what he suggests you do is a pincer type movement and then again do some folds again pincer movements and we're saying about five minutes worth of this pinching and just folding over with a view to get it all mixed together. Now, if it starts getting too sticky, just wet your hands. At the minute, it's still quite a, a wet dough. Um, although, now that that is a bit more mixed it is starting to get a little bit sticky so i'm going to do this for another a few more minutes and then we cover it and leave it 10 minutes and then we're going to come back and do some folds now the room temperature is about 21 and a half um he suggested that the dough target temperature should be around about 24 and it's 25 and a bit so um that's all going according to plan. We're now just going to cover it and leave it for that 10 minutes. Right, so that's rested for a bit. And now I'm going to wet my hands and we're now going to do the first of uh, two folds. So again, it's just this simple, get underneath, pull it over, fold it over the top. Um, quite a textured um, dough that um emma emma wheat it's looks quite sort of nutty in a way um and a bit yellow right so that's now done that is now going to sit and prove for about two and a half hours okay at that time well actually probably two is probably best um 
because at that point we're going to come and do another fold we'll also put the oven on and we're going to then just sit for about another 45 to a uh, minutes to an hour before we shape it and put it into the tin um, actually no I don't think we need to put the oven on at that point because we haven't got it in the tin yet it's got to prove in the tin so yeah so ignore that bit but leave it a couple of hours cover it over like before and then we'll do the final set of folds okay that's said two hours okay um, we start it has risen a little bit we're starting to see some bubbles in it um, and this is where we're going to do our final set of folds not a strictly true because we are going to be um, shaping it to go into the pan you could theoretically uh, do this in a like a Dutch oven or whatever um, but given how sort of slack the dough is you might not want it to um, until you're a bit more practiced with it and given the way mine turn out um, I think I need a bit more practice first so anyway this is um, the idea is anyway that it is one for a tin so that's the folding done um, now we're going to let it go for at least another hour possibly hour and a half we want to start seeing it rise okay um, you don't want to over rise it at this point though because we want it to rise when it's in the tin so anyway I'm going to cover that back over set it aside for an hour hour and a half and then we'll come back and do the tin shaping right I've given this an extra hour so this is a two hours after that last fold simply because um, the temperature in the room had dropped slightly I did check the dough temperature and it was um, up at 22 and a half or something so the dome is maintaining its temperature and you can see now it has well I hope you can see now definitely swollen so what we want to do now is turn it out and we're going to shape it and put it in this pan now although this is a non-stick pan um, Ken does advise that you might want to oil it or grease it or spray it or whatever which I've done particularly around the tops now I'm not sure this is going to but he does say quite often with his pan and this is about half inch longer than his pan um, it's actually slightly um, narrower that way but I think it might be a little bit deeper in this um, he normally says with his pan it actually flows up over the top over the top and therefore if it does that you want to make sure the top surface is greased as it were so that the top of the dough don't stick to it so I'm going to use some of that um, isn't it? Some of that um, Emma wheat flour, okay. And what he suggests you do is you just loosen it with a floured hand to tip out the remaining dough. Let's take the top rack out of the oven. Um, down there uh, just in case it does rise um, I think my oven must be smaller than my old one now what he's saying we do is we're basically stretching out the dough and then folding one side in and lifting up and folding the other side over now it is still very very sticky and he does say that a lot of people are thick at this stage think you know oh it's too wet um, but it's simply that's the way it is it is a high hydration dough now what we now want to do is effectively roll it up I've done that probably around the wrong way So it is about equal to the length of our pan but what we're actually going to do although I can't really see one to be honest with this is put it I'm going to have to use my dough to scrape I think um, is 
put it seam side up. This doesn't really seem to have a seam to speak of. So I think I'm just going to drop that in there. Um, just trying to not so much push it down into the corners, but there is a little bit extra gap in that corner and that corner. But that's now, actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wash my hands off, get rid of this remaining dough, and then I'm going to lightly, with my fingers, I've got my little dish of water there, just brush it over, top surface with some water, and then we're going to put that cover back onto it, and it's going to sit there and prove for another hour. Now I suggest that once you've sort of got everything ready and it's starting to prove, put your oven on. Now this oven, reading the old Kindle version of the book here, um, he's suggesting get it up preheated to 230, but when we're ready to bake it, we just knock it back. A bit like when we're doing it with the Dutch oven, when we preheat the oven at sort of almost maximum, and then we, we knock the temperature down a bit. So we're gonna get up to 230, knock it down to about 220, and then we'll be baking it. But let me just get cleaned up a bit, get that proving, and then we'll get on with the baking in an hour. Whether it is just simply my pan is slightly bigger, um, but as you can see there, it's certainly not coming over the top. It has risen considerably though inside there. Um, so, my oven is now at 220. Okay, and we're gonna put it in there, middle shelf, for about 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, we're gonna check on it, and if need be, turn it, so it's more evenly baking. Although this is in a fan oven, so it should be even anyway. Um, it's gonna probably take good 40, 50 minutes according to Ken, because the hydration amount in it means there's a lot of water to get out. Okay, I'm half tempted to score it, uh, but, well, we'll see. Um, so like I say, we'll check it after 30, and then if need be, turn it round and give it up to another 20 minutes. So that's had 30 minutes, turn around, an additional 20. Now, like I said, it needs that extra time, just turn the oven off, to make sure it gets cooked all the way through so the top will get a lot darker than the bottom. It's just starting to catch on that top edge there. So now, what we want to do, and it has tipped out nicely, quite stiff, sounds quite hollow. So we get a slight split on the top. Like I said, I was almost tempted to score it. Because uh, I thought with that amount of water in there, we might get that sort of scoring. Um, I want to get rid of some of that. I think that's just caught on those edges of that um, split. But now I need to let that cool on a wire rack for at least 30 minutes before you cool it, up uh, cool it, before you slice it. Preferably give it an hour. Okay, um, a bit difficult to tell, as I said, it's quite a heavy, heavy loaf. And it's going off on the ground. So we'll let that cool a bit before we do a taste. To let that um, cool down 45 minutes. Um, it's quite a solid loaf, but then, like we said, the amount of wheat will mean it won't necessarily rise as well. Although um, it did rise in the pan. Just not as much as I was hoping for. But let's just put a thick crust on it. Um, but there you go, you can see it's quite a nice open crumb. Um, look at the pictures in his in the book, very similar. Okay. Um, so what's it taste like? 
let's try a bit just sort of as is I think the flavour is almost nutty in a bone, but not overly nutty. You've got the, you can taste the sourdough in it, not overpowering, but there's that different, different slight tang. Let's try it with a little bit of butter as it were on it. Obviously I've got the end with quite a lot of hard crust on that. Very, very nice. Low, it, low in gluten. I wasn't going to say lower. Um, it is lower, but I don't know how much by. But there you go. So that's from Evolutions in Bread by Old Ken. He's 50% Emma Wheat Bread.